Welcome back to part 2 of manga animation on DaVinci Resolve. Today we're going to be covering the compositing part. This will finalize your manga animation and really bring it to life. This is going to be the same method that After Effects users do, so Sapphire is required. Make sure to download the required effects in the description. And with that said, lock in, let's get into it. Manga animation is a long process. It does take some time, but if you guys want like shortcuts to do it, I might have found simpler ways to do it. One tip was to use the site called Remove BG, but there's there's actually an AI that got recently added to DaVinci Resolve by Acascape that will remove backgrounds automatically. If you search this guy up right here, Acascape, the free AI powered background removal plugin, just give this video a watch and I'm pretty sure this works as well for free users, um, but that really shouldn't matter if you join my Discord server. But if you watch this video, that will skip the process on removing the background and that will save you like 10 minutes. I like using Magic Mask so that's how i got this segment anything is also another option that you could use but it's a little bit more advanced if you want to download this to your computer either way i recommend it thank you for 16-bit g2 for recommending this if you just want subtle movements and i mean subtle just get one warper node you got a picture like a skeleton okay the points where you place the points it's going to be controlling the character right so if i just put one point on him he's the whole thing's gonna move so you gotta like make like a skeleton on the character and when you place the points like this it will prevent everything from moving around like it will be more locked in place right but you don't want to overdo it because you'll get like some really weird warps like this basically like you could just make super subtle movements here so i'm gonna like make it look like his head is kind of like moving down like if you want to do like those invincible style edits this is definitely a way to do it and all you'd have to do is change this warp strength parameter and there you go you got the very quick and easy movement but this is not how you make manga animations this is just what you do if you're trying to do something really quick and you just want some movement in it okay well, you're gonna want to do the stuff that i did in part one where i cut out all the body parts and i make the eyes move you can just quickly get a draft animation like a quick animation using the warper tool imagine like the joints on your body right like i got points here here like like it's locked down on my elbows you feel me so when i place the points they're going to be kind of adjacent to like how the joints would be in real life if it doesn't really look as good uh you can go into the advanced options tab and you can mess around with the elasticity if i put it on fabric it may have like different movements so like if i put it on faster and warp it i mean i don't really see a difference but then when i put it on better like it just gives a better result if you want to take anything away from this video use the warper node all right on to the compositing now i do want to stress that i'm working inside a 1080p timeline make sure if if you need to resize your image you can use a resize node and just make it 1920 by 1080 and then you could put a transform node before that to kind of like control the stretch of it and then do like the masking and all that yada 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 so first up you want to get your background node right here drag it into the blue input then you want to get a merge and make another branch so you have to press this white dot and put into the yellow and then take the background put that into the green and now when you preview the merge everything should be black like this okay that's that's on purpose then you want to click on the background node go to type switch it to gradient this line is going to kind of control how the light source is on the compositing all right so i kind of want the lower part of his body to be more in shadow and then the topmost part to be more in light so i'm going to move these points around and then when i'm satisfied with that click back onto the merge node you can set it to either hard light vivid light or overlay you could even use linear burn so i'm gonna rock with linear burn i kind of just like how it looks if you don't have sapphire plugins just make sure you get it on my discord server but you want to get sapphire drop shadow and you want to plug in all the arrows preview sapphire drop shadow and turn down fg opacity and you'll see a little inner shadow that you could control and move around so you kind of want to like make a pseudo rim light you could leave it on default settings usually default settings look good for me so um you can use rim light cc and that will be in the description it's very very helpful and pretty much that will make a rim light you could change the angle of it i like combining sapphire drop shadow and rim light cc together so 
and I usually just tweak around with the strength so it's not too harsh. I don't want like the super white spots showing. I don't want it. I want like some color in there still. I'm just going to keep it as like a neutral toned color. This part is optional, but if there are parts of your character like highlights, say you're animating Gojo and you want to make his blue eyes really prominent, right? What you could do is go back to either your warper node or your media in node. I'm going to get a 3D here and I'm going to pipe that in. So I'm making like another branch. I'm just going to make a highlight over the colors that I want to be a little bit more prominent. And if you want to make multiple strokes, I'm holding down shift and that will add an additional stroke. And if you want to remove um, a color, you hold alt now, like bring it back. OK, all right. And then I'm going to press invert and that will pretty much solo out all of the yellow parts on Beerus. So I'm, then I'm going to open up matte finesse and go to two and turn up that post filter, hit it with some dream glow and then merge that back on top. Go, let's put it after the rim light CC going from this to this. And it's just, it stands out a little bit more and it looks nicer. All right. So it's completely optional, but if you have a character where it, there's details that you want to bring out, then you can do that next. You want to get your background. If you can't think of a background, you can even go to chat GPT to create a background for you. It doesn't really matter. So this is a background that I recorded and photo scanned myself, and I'm just going to use that for the manga animation. I'm just going to composite the character into this background. I'm going to make it look good. The main elements to really blend this together are two things color matching and light wraps. You could be using a still image. I don't know what kind of stuff you're using for your manga animation, but let's say you do have something that's a moving image, right? You're going to have to camera track it. But so you could probably guess what I'm going to use regardless of where it's even placed on the scene. I'm not even caring about that. I'm going to get a color corrector node and put it after the merge, right? You take the background layer and you drag that into the green input of the color corrector. You go into the menu tab, histogram, and then press match. And then if everything freaking explodes, you want to take the node before the color corrector and drag that into the blue input like this. This will mask everything into the area where the character is and it'll look a little bit nicer. And now your colors may look a little bit weird. So play around with the match RGB sliders and you want to turn up smooth correction. Make sure you really turn up that smooth correction because that helps. A and once you have a color that you're kind of okay with, you just want to click the snap shot match time button and i know this scene is a little bit desaturated right going to like the mid-tones of the character and just turn down that saturation use a transform node and kind of place them wherever i want in the scene now for the light wraps this is really going to bring it together now ikawa does have a light wrap macro so you can use that but for the longest i've been using the jw light wrap so by default it comes with settings that may be a little bit more pleasing if you download my preset for the jw light wrap you probably won't have to finick around too much with the settings plug your foreground element so the character into the green input and then you want to take your background element so this background right here without the character and then when you preview the light wrap node you'll have your character probably silhouetted in a bunch of different colors do not mess with this what you want to do afterward is add a brightness and contrast or a color corrector node just to make some small adjustments to it and then you want to take another merge node Put that on your main branch with the character and drag the light wrap into the green input of the merge. So now that there's a light wrap connected to it, when I change this transform node, it doesn't really matter where the character is. It's going to be taking in that light information data. You can change the light wrap size, the quality of it. You can crank it up. It doesn't really lag. That's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to make it look good. Add some defocus it. And we're just going to hide it in blur almost. Actually, I think I have to flip this around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to like hide his feet with the blur. Just fine tune the blur a little bit more. Turn on that focus check. I want to make sure his head is in focus and the body kind of like is slightly in focus. You know, this is looking pretty decent if you're following along with the tutorial as i'm explaining it i hope your stuff also looks decent you know um but i'm pretty satisfied with this i still have to camera track the scene and for people that are camera tracking scenes let's say you want to composite your character in real life right there's a certain way to do it you go into the 3d system and that sometimes gets a little bit hard for new users right so i'm going to show you my method of doing this i'm gonna grab a camera track node and i'm going to branch it out okay and i'm gonna press that auto track button that was actually really fast 
Then I'm going to go to solve and click solve. And we're done. Go into the export tab and click export. And hopefully if you didn't do anything bad, preview this camera tracker renderer. This purple line should be parallel with the ground plane. It shouldn't be like shaky or jittery. If it is shaky or jittery, maybe you have to stabilize your footage or maybe you have to take the Blackmagic Design Fusion training course because I'm not going to explain that. Okay, so this is a pretty good camera track here. I'm happy with it, so I'm gonna use it. Delete the ground plane and whatever the heck that is. I'm gonna delete the camera tracking node and then I'm gonna get the image plane 3d from my toolbar right here and drag that into the merge and now congratulations you have a white square um what you want to do now is go into the transform tab and kind of position this white square where you want it to be in the scene and you want to really take note of like the motion of it i want it to be parallel with the movement of this pole and i kid you not i'm not like memorizing these units i'm just taking wild guesses got it pretty good the first try but you may need to finick around with it so now once you have that let's take the layer of just our character not the character merged with the background that into the yellow or green input of the image plane 3d now when we preview that camera tracking node it's extremely freaking small go into the transform tab of the image plane 3d and turn up the scale to 10. why did i make the scale 10 it's because i moved the z translation back 10. so you basically just want to make it the same number 10.78 so if you're sitting here trying to play your clip like me and it's lagging, make sure you go into the camera tracker, the render 3D and click this anti-aliasing tab and uncheck low quality and high quality. This will like turn off the anti-aliasing and you also want to disable some notes that may be a little bit laggy because so I know it's going to look good with the blur and I know it's going to look good with the drop shadow. So I don't really care what it's going to look like. I just want to see how the tracking looks. So I'm going to disable defocus it and I'm going to disable, I'm going to check proxy uncheck high quality and uncheck motion blur right i didn't put any motion blur in this but maybe you did give it a second that looks pretty darn good so another tip right and i'm going to add defocus and that gives you bloom so i'm going to turn down the defocus size a little bit and this bloom level treat it pretty well all right you don't want to overdo it and just get a nice fair amount beautiful for the last step of the entire process probably the reason why you switched to davinci resolve in the first place the color correction you know we got to finalize this make it look good so i'm going to press w for saver node right and if the saver node doesn't pop up for you i'm going to press browse make a new folder i'm going to call this beerus pre-comp and then I'm going to go up to the Fusion tab and render all savers. Then I'm going to press R for loader and go into the pre-comp. And now we have a completely, just for organizational purposes, I'm going to make a new Fusion composition. And I'm going to make sure it's like 60 frames like that. And I'm going to put the pre-comp in there. And now we're just dealing with one node. You can have fun with the color now. You can hit it with the film look creator, dehancer. Right. Or you can hit it with dehaze. Yeah, you know, I'm going to use a mixture of dehaze and the film look creator. And you want to give it some more halation, vignettes. I don't know about you guys, but I think we're done. So, yeah. You want to know something else that's pretty cool? There's actually a new way to color grade that's not even on DaVinci Resolve. You're going to learn a new secret. If you go to this AI software tab in my Discord server and click on the latest thing, the Color Lab AI Pro. Go into Fusion, open up that pre comp, save as image, and save that as a PNG. Go to Color Lab AI Media Imports. So this may look a little weird, you know, it's overexposed, but you want to go to this match tab, press auto white balance, then press balance, right? And then you can click this references tab. And there's a bunch, and I mean a bunch of stuff. And now we have like this crazy looking color grade or this one, press match, crazy looking color grade. This looks beautiful. And then you could go down here to look design, get some negative stock, whatever the heck that means. I don't know what it is. I'm just clicking these buttons, get the gen one Kodak film print, right? So just mess around with these settings. And now when you're all finished, you can either push to resolve or you can export as a LUT. I prefer exporting out as a lot, right? And don't change this. Keep it as 33, right? Export it, put that in my downloads folder. I'm gonna call it Beerus Scene. Go back into Fusion. You have the dehaze and film look creator. I'm gonna just 
Let's take out the file LUT node, connect our footage to that, and press browse. And then with one double click, we have a CC. Who do you think wins? I'm gonna take the film look creator, copy and paste it, put it on the other one. Yeah, I'm gonna put film look creator on top of that LUT, and now it's even better than before. Like, it's beautiful. So please, if you're still watching this video, download Color Lab AI Pro. And another thing manga animations love to have in them are lens flares. So I like using S Free Lens. You can get optical flares, and this is a DaVinci Resolve exclusive. Go into the load presets tab, and you have all these beautiful presets to pick from. And let me just get that. And I don't really like the look of it, right? So I'm going to branch it out, remove the BG, unmult it by clicking these two checkboxes right here. I'm going to blur it and then add another merge node and put it back on just like that, right? It would work a little bit better if I put it before the LUT, put it on this merge right here like that. And the thing is about these flares is that you can keyframe them. So keyframe the center, go to the end of your comp and you just like drag it down like a arbitrary amount this little arc right here this is the movement of the lens flare so you can pretty much just draw with this you can take this curve icon and smooth it out and now when i play and if youtube compression does me justice you should be seeing a masterpiece right now absolute cinema bro absolute cinema so that concludes today's tutorial of manga compositing i did have something originally recorded in the past but i just want to completely scrap that video idea and then just restart and i think i did a much better job addressing some issues that you guys had so make sure you just you know put some comments down below if you watched through the whole thing comment something like banana and um yeah clout vfx out see you in the next one